Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos related to geography, environment, research methodology and several other topics on my channel. Now today in economic geography, we are going to discuss about one of the most interesting and important facets or we say most important topics in economic geography that is related to the world industries patterns and also related to their problems and the challenges in today's world. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's look into the world industries, its locational patterns and problems. Now whenever we say locational patterns, it's essentially human geography as we know. So in economic geography, it has a very special position. Now if you look into this map of the world industries, you'll find where geography lies in economics, right? So look at the geographical pattern of these industrial hubs across the world. If you observe in Americas, North and South, you can find out all the coastal areas are essentially, right? the industrial belts and then come to Europe. So again some dots and some elongations if you find north of all Mediterranean and some places also in south of Mediterranean across the Asia Minor if you find and then come to the South Asia, Southeast Asia which is the modern hub of all the industries if you find right in Australia you will find on the coastal belt in India across the northern and the southern belts right. So this is where the location of all the industries are across the world. Now if you find out there are many more areas in the world which do have potential but they are not industrialized. Several areas across the world, across Americas if you observe, across Africa if you observe, across Russia if you observe and several other portions of the world. Now these are the areas where industries are not there, where sustainable resources are not available, laborers are not available, other factors of productions are not available and also there are several socio-economic factors because of which these areas do not have industries. So there is a distinction between the industrial located areas where we have also learned in models and theories the industrial location theory by Weber where he discusses all the factors related to it. So you can go there and watch it again and understand why this pattern has emerged out but here in today's session, we are going to look into the problems of these industries as well and also look into the some of the areas where the factors of production and modes of production have resulted in the industrial hub creation across the world. So now look into the first part that is classification of industries. So there are bases of industrial classification for example size, input of material, output of material and also the ownership. So four basic criteria to actually classify various kinds of industries across the world, right? So cottage, small scale, large scale on the basis of size, the scale factor comes here. Now in terms of inputs, industrial inputs as factors of production, so agro based, mineral based, chemical based, forest based, you can find out several examples across the world in India, right? Metallic and non-metallic as well on mineral. Then output, what they actually process and produce, right? So basic that iron and steel and consumer goods, for example, biscuits, textiles, vehicles and several others, right? And apart from that, the ownership, who owns it? Is it a public sector or a private sector or a joint ownership? So these are the various ways of looking into the classification of industries across the world in India. Now, what is important here is the locational factor, the geographical factor. So industries have an affinity towards a particular location and that's where we talk about the Weber's industrial location theory. So factors of production, for example, availability of raw material, labor supply, technology, resources, these are the four important pivots which lead to the creation of an industrial hub in a particular given space and time. Now, for example, if you observe, world's major industries, iron and steel industry located in Germany, USA, China, Japan, Russia and also in India if you find out, then textile industry, India, Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan and Taiwan, information technology industries, Silicon Valley very famous, the Central California and Bangalore region of India and also Delhi NCR, IT hub, Hyderabad, several other places in India you will find out. Then why are these concentrations in these particular beds? That is the question, right? Why there is a geographical pattern in this? Why there is a locational pattern in the establishment of these industrial hubs across the world? So that's where Weber industrial location theory and factors for industry establishment comes into the picture. 
Now, let's analyze the factors affecting the world industrial location if you want to look into their problems because the problems are associated with these factors. So proximity to the consumer market is the first factor if you observe that who is going to consume the products coming out of the industry. That deals a lot. Market has a very important value in terms of when we set up the industries across the world. Then cheap labor and skilled labor sources, very important. So countries like Vietnam and Bangladesh are doing well as attractive locations because of cheap labor right now. Then labor laws, now it all depends upon what kind of facility is government giving to the laborers and also what kind of laws are governing the work condition of the laborers, right? So working hours, their conditions, these become really important. Availability of raw material sources, obviously it's very important because you have to produce, you have to have input. So in input, raw materials really become important in terms of industry establishment. For example, if you look into the iron and steel cities in India, they are all mostly concentrated in the mineral belt of India. Right. So that is where the determinant factor as is raw material, the iron ore, right, and various other ores, which is important. Then availability of cheap means of transport, because transportation is which will carry the input linkages to the industry and also the produce to the market. So transportation becomes the lifeline of these industrial setups, as we have already discussed in Weber industrial location theory as well. Now, agglomeration areas. In the modern economies, especially the post-World War II economies, if you observe, the agglomeration areas play a pivotal role. Not a single area in isolation can develop as an industrial hub. So agglomeration of factors become really important, right? So low transportation cost, favorable government policy, skilled labor, infrastructure facilities, all these things in a particular region makes it an industrial hub. So there is a aggregation of the factors, the combination or agglomeration of the factors in one particular area. That is important. Now, the natural resources which are important and some of the important natural resources for various industries is the availability of water. Without water, we cannot thrive in terms of industrial setup in most of the cities and all the areas in the world if you have observed across industry availability of water becomes really important so even if water is coming from the underground sources or from the canals or from the river water source become really important now capital here comes the important thing finance the capital the money which is important if you remember we have talked about this in growth pool theory as well right the multiplier effect is created by the corporates the big industrial hubs when they establish themselves in one area they create a multiplier effect across their society right so that's where capital intensive work is very important so capitalists are the backbone of industrialization across the world and they work in tandem with the government so it's very important to be an attractive destination for capitalists if you want to industrialize that is still the policy now cheap energy availability then favorable climate tax incentives by the government are several other factors that also determine these locations of various industries across the world so now when we know these several factors associated with industrial location related to weber's industrial location theory or growth pole theory and several other industrial theories what we understand is these factors are not spread uniformly throughout the world right the growth does not happen in uniform ways so we have the polarities we have the locational areas we have the important dots on the world map where you find these facilities available and that's why the industrial hubs in a better condition in those areas and other areas are devoid of industrial location now with this is linked the industrial problems so first of all let's look into the analysis across the world if you look into these eastern side eastern coast of usa and some areas in the western coast you find san francisco southern california la and also here the ontario the great lakes region here pittsburgh new york city philadelphia baltimore and so many other areas in boston and other places right these are the industrial hubs here now look into the European side, so United Kingdom, Rhine, Ruhr Valley if you know here in Germany, St. Petersburg, then you have in Moscow, right, Ural Mountains, Volga region and several other region, Po region and Spain. If you observe the world map, 
there is in Europe and also in some portions in Russia, if you find the Eurasia region has a lot of areas where industrialization is there because of natural resources and also because of the historical reasons. These were the hubs of city states, mercantile states. If you observe the Western Europe, if you know the geographical thought, here the first kind of trading towns and mercantile city states developed in the Middle Ages and also some of them right from the ancient, right? Because they had open ocean. Here you had Mediterranean and they traded across the Gulf. So these area had all these locational importance. I am talking about geographical importance here, right? So geography played a very important role all throughout the history and still playing in terms of the development of these industrial hubs across, right? Now look into the China side and South Korea side where you have industrialization in Japan, South Korea, China. These are the important areas. You can take this map, you can pause the video here and look into these particular areas where the modern industrial setups are there, special economic zones are there and how China is leading the world chart in terms of the industrial production, right? Because of the land, labor, technology, access, transportation facilities and everything which is agglomeration in one particular area. That's why it's very important. Now, because we know the world pattern, it's important to also look into the problems of industrialization or industrial regions across the world. The first important thing is the geopolitical issues or challenges across the world. The world has been and always since ancient times till today has been aligned across the power structure and that has dealt with the economies. So if you look into the modern world, now remember this East Asian community, in the central Middle East, you have Iraq's oil and several other areas where you have OPEC countries, then you have European Union, and then you have this Canada and USA. So these are the core regional cities which you observe as NAFTA, EU and EAC, which deals or has the control over world economy mostly. And that's why they dominate the world in terms of decision making. We also have SARC nations, which is not that effective. We have Association of Southeast Asian Nations, right? And we have several other units of trading across the world. But what is happening because of geopolitical tensions, issues, political instability, the problem of industrialization still persists. Some dominates, some are being dominated. So entire class structure is still prevalent across the economies in the world. So geopolitics is one factor that leads to several problems across the world. Then other factors, changing compliance, regulations and traceability. This is very common to the manufacturers across the world, industrialists across the world, because remember, there are several regulations which keep changing and the standards are also changing across the world. So manufacturers could well end up cutting the corners with ultimately ends up affecting the end consumer. So what happens because of the change in production standards and regulations keep changing in economies, there is a problem again to cope up with the demand and also the quality of product. Then comes the relevance. Now remember with technological changes, the relevance of industrial goods keep changing. If you look into the mobile phone technology itself in last 20 years, you will find the relevance of the technology has changed the market so much, right? So what happens? The rate of innovation increases with time and what happens? The means companies have to rush and that can lead to all kinds of temptations. So what happens here? The urge to skip a step or avoid certain tests can have the problems across the system of industries across the market. So this is a problem that everybody wants to make a profit in industrial setup and what happens because of the continuous change in technology there is a race and across the race there are so many things that are happening and compliance to the nature that is eco-friendly development also is a major problem. So what do you find? Next one is your skill gap that keeps happening. Now remember one generation exits the workforce and makes way for the new generation of workers. But what happened? The transition. The transition between the two generations in terms of technology is a problem or a challenge in itself. So manufacturers face this kind of challenge of filling up those positions with equally skilled members. Because remember experience is very important in production sites, in industries, right? So the newer force, newer employees are not skilled enough. They would take time, they would take training. So you have to invest on training. That's also a major challenge in today's world for the industrialists. And healthcare and environmental concerns are growing up across the world industries. If you remember in US, it's manufacturers who foot healthcare bills for their employees. Now remember their healthcare bills are also taken by manufacturers in many countries. But remember, this is where cost goes up. So at the consumer end, you will get the final product with increased cost because of so many factors that are associated in the production chain. So healthcare costs, 
have added up now. Environmental concerns across the worldwide industry. Whenever we say environment, remember it is directly looking into the industrial side, saying that is negative, isn't it? But without industry, we could also not thrive. So what is happening? Environmental concerns are growing. Regulations with regard to sustainable and environmentally safe processes and practices put more pressure on manufacturing process because they have to take care of it. They cannot randomly keep producing goods like that. So waste disposal and regulation of materials and more resources are needed to follow the best practices. Even if you know that eco-friendly technology in terms of 5-star ACs, 3-star ACs and so many things that have come up across modern technology in refrigerator, ACs and modern technologies for our benefit for the consumption of the consumer goods across the world, what has happened? There is an industrial chain that has set up. Now, they need to follow the guidelines related to sustainable development goals, right? In every country, there are regulations. So these are the challenges for modern industries across the world. And that's where we are looking into the economic geographies of these industries across the world. And now at the end, what we are looking at, the industries and leading in terms of which kind of production. So iron and steel industry, USA, Germany, Russia are still leading. Cotton textile, USA, Japan and Russia is leading. In rubber, Malaysia, Indonesia and Thailand is leading. Then in synthetic rubber, USA, Germany and Japan is leading. And there is an exhaustive list that is here, which you can read by pausing the video here. Now this is giving you a geographical pattern in terms of the production of goods. Right. So what you can do is not just leave into a table, but you can make a map of this data that where which is mostly produced, which kind of goods. Right. For example, pulp and paper, Canada and USA is leading again. Newsprint paper, USA and Canada is leading. Right. So observe where USA is there, where Canada is there, where Germany is there. And you can also look into that how the entire industrial setup is still dominated by the world's developed nations here. Right. So that's very important to understand in the modern connotation or we say 21st century industrial societies that were developing and the way forward in future. So now when we have discussed in details about the world industries, its locational patterns and also the problems and remedies across the world. Now in sessions to come, we'll be also talking on different aspects of the transport and communication and several other parts of economic geography. So stay tuned, stay safe. Keep learning and do share with others as well.